Welcome everybody else who joined us. I see Brother Nick, Diaora, Mama Shelley. Good to see you. Good to see you, Brother Naibu, Mama Matuzola. Are you back? Are you back in Louisiana now? Or are you still out in DC? <laughs> Welcome everybody. Okay. Hey, Brother Michael, good to see you. Good to see you. All right. Anybody got some thoughts, questions, comments? Let's get to it. All right, Mama Emma, go ahead. Well, praises to the most high sending and I mean that I'm so Um yeah, I was I was so frustrated because the most high showed me so much and I diligently took time and apply my inductive Bible study methods and scriptures. And I mean, I went to bed and my body was resting, but my spirit was just going to town. And so I got up today just in peace. And um, I got up really early. I haven't gotten up this early in a long time. I think it was about 5.30, 6.30. So anyway, I just took my time and Again, I was meditating on some things in my head, just, and then it looked like it was going to rain, so um, I took in my cushions from outside. So I didn't go back to uh, my documents, and then when I decided to do that, I got distracted. But anyway, by the time I figured out, all my work was gone. And yesterday, when I was doing this, I thought, I'm going to send a copy to I told him. And then I said, no, I can't do that. I shouldn't do that because he'll think I'm trying to tell him what to teach. So anyway, but anyway, as you was going through there, it's like I had to, I really had to pray so that the most high would help me uh, remember some of the things that he gave me, even though I have my notes. And so as you got to the part of uh, rereading the actual commandments, then it started to come back to me. And I did the same thing that you did, um, which, you know, one of my primary things is to do a uh, word study, but I don't have the exact information from that. Oh, it was, oh, it was so good. But anyway, uh, the first thing is uh, what? What, we, what are we to do? We are to honor. Who are we to honor? Father and mother. How are we to honor them? By heeding, obeying. Uh, not departing, reverencing, seeking, honoring, and obey the authorities that he sets. Okay, so then I went back and it's like, okay, honor. Okay, and again, of course, my mind immediately goes back to Genesis. Okay, the most high created everything. Uh, so he's a father and he created it through the earth. So that's the mother. Okay, so we are to honor him and the earth. Okay, I'm trying to hold back because I want to jump right. <laughs> but two feet of what's going on right now with that first one. <laughs> but anyway, um, okay, so again, so you go on. So you're to heed, he what? Heed his voice. And he gave the commandment to guard the garden. Uh, take care of the earth realm. Uh, she is your mother. Uh, I have given you everything that you need in order to uh, live this life uh, in my likeness. Uh, in my likeness in the earth realm. Okay, so that's heeding, heeding the voice. Uh, and then there's another scripture that says, not only the commandments that we're, we're talking about uh, that was reiterated again these are okay I think I counted um, and I didn't I'm gonna say this is the third time that the commandments are being repeated okay the father gave them at the beginning uh, then he gave them to Noah to, um, and and all the children Abraham Isaac and Jacob uh, and everyone you know which we should know at the mountain Everybody heard, 
which is the introduction to these commandments, the, the book of the law. Everybody heard this. Okay, so now it's all the way down to Moses and Moses is repeating these laws again in Exodus. Um, so uh, <laughs> as we uh, going on through that, then we um, I'm going to go down to where it says seek unto their house. Okay. Whose house? Who are there? Who is he talking about? He's talking about the humans, the people that he placed in the earth realm. And, and, and seek and that's what I, was, I was thinking, Earth, uh, Garden of Eden. And it says, but, and for how long are we to do this? All the days of your life. So from the beginning of creation to now, we're supposed to have taken care of the Earth realm. Okay, and so a uh, scripture that comes to my mind right now, it said, you divided my Earth. Okay, who divided the Earth? Okay, then we got to go back to the destruction of the flood. Okay, so all those things is, is uh, in these words. And so you have to, again, go deeper into these words uh, to find out what action happens when these words are given. So obeying just that doesn't mean, you know, you read it and you know it, but it's an action that takes place. Okay, so now we got climate warming and all those things, the recycling, you know, why do we have the recycle? Why do we have climate warming? Because the earth realm, because the father was not honored. The father and the mother was not honored. And then you break it down into the human existence. It's the same thing. The families are divided. So anyway, that's what I was getting. And, and it's just uh, amazing. Um, the English language, again, uh, and, and they're so busy right now rewriting these scriptures. If we don't get the understanding from our uh, original language, uh, so many people are going to uh, not make it, you know. But again, you know, even when I say that and, and you feel this overwhelming um, thrust of the enemy upon us and, and the land as uh, Mama Zola was saying at the beginning, it's like you just get frustrated and you just, <laughs> and you just want to do all these things, but then you just have to bring, humble yourself, power under control, and, 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 and let this work out. And the other thing that came to my mind, even as I'm talking in the Revelations, I think it says in these last days, and I don't really think it's what the Most High is saying, but uh, I think it's the enemy saying that he's going to try to wear the saints out and the most high, again, which we were saying, the most high is going to let these things happen. He's not. He's telling us to wake up and stop uh, resting, which was another thing that came to uh, uh, my mind when I was thinking about this, because then I went and read about, in Maccabees what they did on, on the Sabbath. And at first they weren't fighting and, and they had lost a lot of their their family. Uh, th uh, Judah had lost a lot of his family because they were observing the Sabbath. But then he said, look, you know, they got away and, and he talked to him. He said, look, we can't we can't continue to live. Otherwise, we will not be in existence. And what do the enemy want? He wants us to be not in existence. But again, when you go back and do an in-depth word study on the Shabbat and the Sabbath uh, and host, the Most High says he prepared us the same way he prepared the, the garden uh, for paradise. He also prepared us for war, W-A-R. We were equipped for war because that's why he told us to guard the garden, because he knew what the enemy had done. So, okay. I'm going to stop right there. Thank you. Thank you, Mama Emma. Uh, thank you, Mama Emma. Good points. Uh, you made me realize some things that I didn't mention, but I'll, I'll come back to them as well. Okay, Mamara, your daughter, go ahead. Um, oh, you know, when 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 we when I'm at home reading <clears throat> these um, commandments, 
they just, you know, when we sit here in discussions, these command, these words open up so much. You know, we thank the Moanda for being in our presence because it's only the Moanda that can open up these things for us the way he wants us to understand it. The first thing that, that came to my mind was why the Most High is called the Ancient of Days. Why is he called the Ancient of Days? <laughs> and this commandment is one of the commandments that lets you know why. Because he's the oldest person that ever existed. And so he's a father. He He's telling us to have reverence and respect for the for the elders. And he's the oldest alive. So, you know, as he, as he says, every knee should bow before him. Because, so when he, when he says the ancient of days, he's speaking to a specific people who understand what it is to respect an elder. You know, um, he told us, it was uh, Deuteronomy 28, 49, and 50. It says that, let me see. And, and the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor shew favor to the young. So when he spoke this Deuteronomy, we know who he was speaking to. And the people who, you know, as we know this happened to, who was the people that he was speaking to? in Mount Sinai. If you follow the thread, it is one thread. And the, and the wording that they will not respect the old, that the people that took us into captivity will not respect the old, nor show favor to the young, meaning it's not their custom, it's not their culture. So we, he was speaking to a people who this is their custom and their culture to respect the old. So this opens up so many things. You know, the thought came to my head, how does Satan Zombie see us as opposed to how we see each other? And, you know, we really have to get this because it is important. The Tanzambi created kings. And so he never stopped seeing us that way. You know, in Ecclesiastes, it says, I, I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. So although we may have seen ourselves as enslaved or people call us descendants of slaves or whatever terminology that suits them, Satan Zambi sees us as, as the kings he created. So he is speaking to us to respect the elders and respect the kings. You know, in, in uh, as, as um, the Bible says, the kingdom suffered violence and the violent take it by force. And they see us because they have this paternalistic um, attitude towards us. So they see us as children. I try to integrate how they try to integrate us into their system, mm -hmm. and but it never really took. And now we're seeing the dividing of our peoples um, because of our culture. You know, but they they saw us as their children, as children, mm -hmm. you know, as the lowest. Mm -hmm. But the scripture, the, I mean, the scriptures cover everything. The scripture said, children, obey your parents in Satan Zambi. 
for this is good. So he knew, he, they, he foresaw all of this. These commandments, the more you read them, the more you realize that it was the foreshadowing preparing us for these Gentile rules for the time of the Gentile, where we would be totally separated from our people, our culture, our Nzambi, and everything. I mean, so there's so much, there's so much, you know. So, you know, going back to what I said about, he still sees us as kings and queens. He is in Zambi. That's who he created. You know, so if you're a servant, then you're a king who's a servant. And so he sees, still sees us in the same way. We have to start seeing our, uh, each other as that. And not only that, he was referring to our parents because they are kings and queens. And what he's teaching us is how to respect a king and a queen because coming from where we're coming from at the bottom of the barrel these are things we have to relearn that respect and reverence for kings and queens that you know because they taught us to hate ourselves and hate each other that's some psychological damage and trauma you know that we have to come back from and turn that around and see each other as kings and queens and give each other that reverence and respect. So, you know, I have some more thoughts, but I'll, I'll, I'll speak them later. I want to give somebody else a chance to speak. Oh, thank you so much, Mama Royal Daughter. That was really good. Wow. Yeah, there, there's a lot to unpack here. Um, Michael, I know you had put your hand up, but you're getting some time to uh, pull over somewhere. Uh, let me know when you're ready to comment. Um, go ahead if you're ready. Can you guys hear me pretty good? Yep, we can. This... Uh, yeah, I had to pull over. Sorry, guys, I was driving. But this one to this one has taken cake with me. I had to really uh, study on this, one, and I mean it because I have I had problems with the first three words, and I mean the serious problem. We are uh, like uh, my daughter said. I think we were conditioned to you know not. Not, not like ourselves, not love ourselves. And then uh, the broken family, which the dynamic was definitely broken in my my house. That first one was a monster. I didn't know how to do that. When you have a, a father who, who is everything opposite of, and at the same time, he still has the uh, that position as a child. How do you, <clears throat> how do you know to do that? Well, I had to learn that the father is also the father who created us and everything else. So I think one of the main reasons I uh, I struggled with it is because I didn't see it. And it was because of my mother who reinforced those first three words, honor not father. That helped me with uh, doing it. I take a page out of <clears throat> out of uh, Abram's life when he had to get away from his his father. Just and I had to keep reading it. I had to keep reading that. Uh, coming coming up, you know, it was a you had a, a bad or you had a different understanding of what honor was and respect as young men. We we really didn't know what it was. We made it to be what we were, what we thought it was, but this toughness and all that. But I had to learn to honor my father, regardless of uh, his faults or whatever, which which took me learning him, 
regardless. It's, it's it's pretty hard because you see all these these things that are against what's inside you, that the natural right and wrong. But at the same time, you you're being told by the two figureheads, you know, honor honor your honor your father, honor your father, honor your mother. It's pretty easy doing, you know, honoring my mother. Matter of fact, I'm here now with her. Take care of her, at, you know, clever. You know, uh, I'm not really gonna go in there because it's really easy. The hard work is the father. And my mother told me a long time ago, how you say you honor me, you don't honor your father. You talk about a punch in the stomach. I thought I was, you know, I'm the only, I'm the only male in the family. Cause you know, I'm, I'm old moms down. But a long time ago, she was like, don't, you know, don't, don't pop your head up too high because you ain't doing me no justice if you're not honoring your father. I mean, I didn't know what to do with that. I had to go back to the book. But, you know, I'm a street guy, so they say, you know, at, at that age, I'm, I'm learning everything from my side. I don't see that. I'm going to honor somebody who done wrong. Mom, he done you wrong. He done my sister's wrong. And he still gets up in front of a group of par parishioners and preaches the same thing that I'm supposed to be <laughs> learning from. Talk about oxymoronic. This man ain't gonna even come over here and chastise me. The battle wasn't, wasn't, uh, wasn't between he and I. It was between me and myself. It, regardless of what I thought, uh, I understood this this uh, passage to mean to me as a as a youth. That's just what I thought, you know. What I thought that's that's it. That's just, and I say this a lot to my children, my children, and everything. What you think is just what you think, and you can think whatever you want, and it, it doesn't really matter. It's just what you think. You can have as many thoughts as it is the sea. I mean, sand of the, on the seashore. It doesn't really mean nothing. It's just what you think. Do what you're told. If when she was telling me at the age <clears throat> probably 12, you're not, you, you can't half do anything. You're not honoring me if you're not honoring your father. Like I, and I, I preluded to when Abram was told to get away from uh, his father. That is what I had to constantly read about. Uh, as a youngster, I always went to David, David, David. I had to go way, way back because it didn't matter what I thought he was doing or what he did. He ain't owed me no explanation. He, he didn't wrong me. I'm not the judge. So I have to do what this said. So I, I had a relationship with him, which helped me to learn him. I've, I've lived with him, no condemning, no none of that. I went through all that that stage as a you know preteen. Oh, I'm gonna do this to him. I'm gonna do that. Yeah, whatever. What I did was I embraced him. You know, what you did is what you did. I don't, I don't judge you. But in order for me to learn who I am, I had to. I had to, I had to see what's up with him. I had to honor him. His position, and I came from him. You know, so it wasn't. I wasn't always a, a man as a, as a child. I, I learned as a child, but as a man, you learn as a man. So my, my overstanding group, which helped me sort of take this in a different light. I seen him uh, take her his mom, but I also found out he didn't have a he didn't have a father as well. So how does he know? Took a while, but that. That, that helped because this is super significant because like we're studying now, you know, you got those first couple of lines and then you got the end part. That's a whole lot to this commandment. And me being inside, going inside several times, I flunked all of them, judges, preachers, teachers, lawyers, anybody in, in authority weren't, wasn't that to me because I couldn't see you. The only authority in my life I saw was my mother. If it wasn't for her, a male didn't have nothing coming. 
you really had to show dominance in order for me to have any type of respect for you because there's no, I don't want to honor you. I don't know what that means. Not no one that looks like me. Reading and studying, even, even as a youngster, it, it helped me to, to kind of balance out some of the, some of the different nuances that we were, we were being told as, as growing up and you compare them to these teachings and at, as any other human, you, you kind of go off of the, uh, the experiences you had. When, when, when you're surrounded by trauma, everything is taken, well, to me, I took everything as normal. I didn't know what trauma was. I thought it was just normal, you know? I can walk down the street, somebody get their head blown off. Wasn't me, you know? I would just keep going. That, 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 those things, they become a part of you. It kind of make you numb to certain things. And I so thank him that it didn't make me too numb. It, those things are, are very, uh, they were very, very important in helping me to see others and what they've gone through and also understanding what trauma was. I was so traumatized that I didn't, I didn't have the, it didn't affect me, but I saw the effects on others. So, if that's happening to them, I had to take a, I had to really take a real look in the mirror and say, man, I'm really screwed up. I must be so screwed up <laughs> that they must be thinking something wrong with me. Uh, the main thing is that I wasn't scared. I wasn't fearful to act. I wasn't fearful to go to my my father and say, hey, you know, uh, what what is this? What is that? What is this? What is that? And going back to my mother. Hey, what is this? What is that? We we did center most of our our teachers and upbringing around the Bible, but what did happen, and I'm so thankful for. I wasn't I wasn't cowered into a corner and told I couldn't ask questions. Well, yeah, I kind of would, but I pushed out. I asked anyway, and then I started to see that people didn't have the answer. I always asked about this honor of our father and mother because of the position my, my father held in the church. It didn't make sense to me. Yeah, I'm supposed to do that and the police and judges and that makes sense. I've been asking questions since I was two. No one's answering. Our experiences answer the questions. And you ain't having no experience without the most high. I was all right with that. As scary as it was, I was all right with it. When we, when we were uh, in, uh, in this discussion last week, I was, I was so, I was so anxious to get to this one. Well, I started reading, <laughs> I started reading the book, and I have to say, I really have to say, what it was, it was not what I thought. I thought I was going to be in this thing so hype. It. It wasn't, it was a, it was an unveiling of truth and looking over my life, man, I was, I was, I was so the opposite of doing that. And the reason why wasn't because I was hard and I had some, some, some ugly deep down resentment. It wasn't, I, I just, I didn't see it. It wasn't nothing that was told to me to do except by my mom. I wasn't getting this from men. So I kind of took it as that ain't what you're supposed to do, or you had a choice. No, you don't have a choice. Uh, when you really come to terms with who, who you are and why are you here, and it's more than just you, the effects of what you do, the effects of what others do, and how you take all this and move forward. That's what that that's what that's what it is. I could not have gone and try to find out a little something by myself by bringing my old man into my house, and it is not a dish. We okay, you know. I can say old man because of some of the things. Well, I honor him. I don't gotta like nothing. I don't gotta like nothing done. You don't owe me no. You don't owe me no reason why. You don't owe me nothing. And I didn't come like that. And I used to always say to my family, you know, my cousins, man, they like them. So as long as they like them, I'm cool. Maybe he was doing something, you know, that 
I was likable. You know, I'm the best. I'd have been to the penitentiary, did everything. It had to be some. So learning him and I learned me. I don't got to hold nothing against him. I, I'm not the most high. I don't, I ain't supposed to do it. All I'm supposed to do is be obedient. What I finally got out of this, maybe Wednesday night, <laughs> because I'll tell you, I kept going back. Wednesday night, it was just so clear. If you do right, what's behind you is right. I'm a man who has children. All I have to do is what's right. What's right by who told us to do what's right. I ain't got to see him. I see him. He's in me. He's the one that was with me in the hole. I've been in the hole longer than half a year. That's six months in a room smaller than your bathroom. I wasn't by myself, but you learn that that's who is in you. You follow those thoughts and, and nuances and these little things that come to make you feel like you're very smart. You know, he's telling you from within that voice, that's that's him. You know? So dealing with self, you have to deal with those who who brought you in this world. So now you know how to honor. You, you know how to respect those, regardless of what they do. Someone may have done you wrong, but that doesn't mean, you know, you don't honor them. I can get away from it. It's not my, it's not my, it's not my position to repeat what you did. Not my, I can regroup and go on, but I should know better to not repeat. Yes, you're supposed to, you know, do what they, they tell you as your parents, but when it's wrong, it's wrong. That's that's the difference. That voice that's in you, that's the most high. That's what that's what that that changes everything. You know, you you can't you can't you can't balance out a right or wrong for too long. It doesn't make sense. But with me, it don't make sense because it's either or. You know right or wrong, whether they tell you or not. I didn't need my father to tell me what he did was wrong. I already know. How? Well, I had to learn how. It's in us. We have a choice to do this, right? Just like I got a choice to repeat it. I ain't gonna repeat it. But also, it, it gives, it makes me see that the responsibility is in my hand to do what's right. Why? Because those that come behind me will repeat. If I if I'm subject to battling with what I see over what's in me, that's a teeter totter that's going to never stop. And I think fear is one of the big things that keeps us from making that stuff. You know, uh, the my my youth that are under me, you know, I ain't had the best relationship with, but it's 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 very it's it's great, and I think it is as it's is as good because of of me knowing and understanding where my strength comes from. And I'm not, you know, I'm not really, I'm not scared. You know, I'll, I'll tell them, you know, I'll tell them, you know, how much I read, how much I study. And I don't mind that it's not something that they've heard. It, it ain't, it ain't supposed to. I'm not, I'm not supposed to negotiate with you. I made you. I ain't got to negotiate with you when I know what's right. I'm going to do what's right. Regardless, you see, I, as parents, we don't we don't have a chance, and I don't know where, when it comes to outside influences. I stopped tripping off that a long time ago. I'm the influence to these children because what I do, regardless of of the the uh, adversity I've been, I don't pat myself on the back. I didn't bring myself through. I try to show you all instead of telling them so much. I just try to show you. Where did I get it? It's in here. When you don't see me on the corner with the homeboys, when you, when you see me with a book in the middle of the day instead of going outside, this, this is what is in me to do better. And I didn't do this by myself. I talked to him. He talks to me. You cannot understand it. And this is like I said, I'm telling children this who are now 30 year old. I can barely believe it. But he, he asked, you know, I, my mouth can say a lot of things. We can make our mouth say a lot of things, but our actions, and our actions, it, those things are something else. And uh, 
like I say, when Wednesday that night, it's the whole the whole thing was where you move, those behind you. And I always say, as a leader, as a man, you can't do that by looking back. So I have to say, man, this this one with authority, <laughs> I had big problems. But if I, I thank it because it it could have been worse. I I tell you what, it don't make it don't take much for me to learn, you know, because I like to learn. Some of us hard headed, I don't get what. <laughs> I ain't really hard headed because I don't like stuff to hurt me, you know. So w once I learned, you know, and continued to do what's right, things got a lot easier. I'm still, I still, I still have tons of questions about honoring uh, my father because I want to make sure that I did and I still do. I, and I, I got, I don't know if I'm, I don't know where I'm at with. But I tell you, I'm so glad that we introduced to the book of the law because it's a lot, it's a lot that was in, in there. And reading, rereading it, rereading it. You know, it's a couple of lines, but it says a lot. And it and it ties one ties to another, one ties to another. It teaches us. Honoring my mother taught me to honor my father. Honoring, honoring my father with him not having no clue that I did, it taught me to honor. The, the the male authority at school. I had I had a minute with that, you know. I had to, I had to take I had to make one teacher take his shirt off on me. Uh, I, I I had a military class and I told this man I don't listen to me. That man closed the door, and took his shirt off on me. I seen all type of tattoos and muscles, but he told me, as men, you don't need that. That's not what you need in order for you. To honor and respect. He said, I just did this to show you we come from the same area. I understand. You don't you don't need nobody to make you you smart. You have honor in you. If you didn't, you wouldn't ask and act it out as you did. So these things took took a toll on my life. And I, I, I respect that man for that because he didn't have to take time to do that. And I had plenty of that, you know, but it took always going back. Always going back to the Bible. You know, all we has that little tidbit. But here now, man, it I I I say it like this. We only had that little bit, or I only had that little bit because that's all I could take then. Now you I have more overstanding, so he done booked me with more so I could take it. And uh I'm gonna let it go right now because I'm gonna let somebody else go. Oh get the thank you, Michael. Wow. Ungeta. That is some good mm -hmm. info. That is some good info. Um, I know I saw different hands up, but I'll go to Mama Shelley. And then um, if we don't get a new hand, then I'll go to Mama Royal Daughter, then Mama Emma. Uh, but wow, great, 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 great input. Let's keep going, Mama Shelley. <laughs> Thank you. Other, um, where I am, there's a lot of background noise, so I hope you can hear me. Can you hear me, Kelly? Yes. Okay. Um, my brother Michael, what you said is so powerful, and there's so much in what you said. I so appreciate you saying everything that you said, but one thing that you said jumped at me, and I have to just see. Um, this is the power and authority that the Tanzani gives men. And I don't know if men really realize the power that Zambi has put in your hands. Because he said um, his mother told him to honor his father. And he didn't hear this from any of the men. He said he had not heard it until that point. He hadn't heard it up to that point from any man. So he thought it was something he didn't have to do. He thought he had a choice. Now the power in that is that he had not heard it from the man. The man saying it, whether it was his father or any other man would have validated that, would have made that something of importance. This is what Takan Dami says when he, 
he has placed that authority in a man. And that is the authority he has given a man. That is God given. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to put it on. You don't have to learn it or pretend you have it. When a man speaks, everything around stops to listen. It is very powerful. Try it out. You can walk down the street and see children misbehaving. You don't have to know those children. You don't have to know where they came from, know their parents, nothing like that. And if you say that and stop that, they're going to stop and look at you. But I can walk down that same street and see them doing the same thing. And I say, stop that. And they might cuss me. They might tell me something. They might react. Yeah. But with a man, it's different. The Tan Zambi has given you a power and authority. And it is, it is so amazing. And you have to let Zambi cultivate that in you. But it is just powerful. I can't even explain to you how powerful it is. I have seen it over and over, over and over. And I see it and I say it is so powerful. It is like when Zambi speaks, everything reacts. He has put that in you. He has put that in a man. When you speak, you were heard. If, if Michael had heard that from a man way before when his mother was telling him, he would have understood. Any man could have told him. But it, it made a difference to him. He didn't hear it from a man, so he thought he had a choice. Not that he didn't honor his mother, not that he didn't respect his mother, but be, it didn't come with the, the deep level of authority that came when a man said. I, I hope I, I, I get you to understand that that was so powerful, brother, when you said that. It just resonated in my being because I've seen it so many times in life. And sometimes I, you know, I, I'm, I'm going down the road and I see these children, teenagers, doing things. And I feel like telling them, say something, you know, say something. I actually got, <laughs> I actually got all caught up one day and, and I went over to a man I didn't know. And I said, say something to those children. Just say something. And he looked like me like, this woman crazy but the way i said it he probably thought okay let me just say something before this woman slapped me and he did he said something to them and they stopped and he looked at me and said thank you because and i and i i don't know i think he was surprised because he had a little surprise on his face but the power that, that tanzami has given you and and it's for a reason it's for a reason Guys, it is powerful. It's really okay. I'm done. I'm Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Mama Shelley. Thank you so much. Well said. Very, very well said. Oh my goodness. This is good. Really good. Mama Royal Daughter, uh, go ahead and then I uh, will have Mama Emma. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> So, you know, this scripture is like my lighthouse scripture. It, it, it always points me back to, as we're doing these commandments, this scripture always comes up. Uh, Galatians 4 says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all but is under tutors and governors until the appointed time of the father. Even so, we, when we were children, under, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law to redeem them that were under the law. So, you know, what Brother Michael was speaking was a demonstration of my point. So my point is uh, um, Genesis 2, 7, it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living soul. 
Now Ezekiel 37 verses 8 through 11 says, and when I and when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus said the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet in an exceeding army. You know, when you spoke about the command, how uh, the definition of commanding or commandment, it brought me back to when Satan Zambi created Adam. And, you know, the the book says he breathed the breath of life. And that kind of never made sense to me. <laughs> but when you read Ezekiel 37, it says command. He, he spoke to, the, he's, he commanded life into Adam. And he told the prophet, command life. Speak to the four winds that the life will come into. So he literally spoke instructions into Adam. He spoke instructions. And what we're doing right now is we're living, we're walking prophecy. We are Ezekiel 37. He says he commanded Ezekiel way back then to speak to the four winds and bring the breath of life back to us. We're the second Adam. This is the recreation of Adam. What we're sitting here doing is breathing the bed of life, the instructions that he gave the prophet to speak into this day, we're receiving them. And we're coming to life. He says, a great army. So, you know, what Michael was speaking about was really literally, we're literally seeing the process of life happening through him. The awakening, the waking up, the, the breathing of that breath. He says, come from the four winds. He commanded, and he did say it was a commandment from the most high. So, you know, when you gave that definition, it just opened so, it just opened it up so wide you know, that it wasn't really a breath. It was a instruction, life instruction that he gave Adam that put life into Adam. And he's doing the same with us now, giving us life instruction and putting life into us. And get that. And get that. That is Ingeta. very, very well put. Oh my goodness. Thank Ingeta. you. Thank you to the wonder. Mama Emma, go ahead. Oh, praises. Yes. Uh, likewise, um, uh, Brother Michael is a demonstration of, of the word. Um, the scripture says, for well, the word of Selena Nanini is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. And so when he decided to learn to listen to the voice that was telling him how to become a man, that was the word, that was the word, that was again, the beginning, in the beginning, the Most High spoke. And, and we know that speaking is a sound and we need oxygen, air, everything that we are in the physical is part of that. So uh, my thought on, on that was, even before he began to speak was uh, spiritual. Everything is spiritual first, then flesh. It's the sound, it's the voice, it's the law, 
first and then flesh. And so, and the other scripture is, I have given you everything that you need to live a righteous life in the flesh, spiritually and in the flesh. And again, that goes back to this honor. Who are we to honor? First, we have to honor the creator and, and, the, and, and, and the earth. Okay. And so in, each one of us individually are learning that. Like, I didn't have a father either to tell me. And, and I was separated from my mom. But again, the spirit within us has always been crying out. Again, with one of my other favorite scriptures, I have never left you nor forsaken you. He has never left us. And the enemy, again, wants to make us believe that. And see, that's the only, that's our only fight. Then, and now, until, and as we are getting to the until, because we're rising up, our light is shining, however small it may be, but together it is powerful. And it's the powerful word that's going to happen soon and very soon when the body of the Most High will speak in agreement. It will be that double-edged sword that's going to go forth and destroy the enemy. And we're starting to see that bits and pieces because he said he can't do it all at once because then we will be exposed to the destruction, you know, will become collateral damage again. Because that's what happened in the beginning when the enemy fell from the earth. So, I mean, everything that we're reading and studying as we're going through these, uh, this particular, the book of the law. And again, the key is the book of the law, the words, the voice of the most high. As as a uh, royal daughter often tell us, he, he he's the law, he made the law. Oh, she breaks that down about the law. So we don't get that. And we are, we're getting it. Because it's in us. We are made how? In his image and his likeness. We are examples of the law walking and breathing in this earth, taking back our authority to exact the power that comes with that. Before we was focusing on the power, but we didn't know we had authority. Now we know we have authority. We know how to use that weapon. That power. I remember when I was learning about uh, the Holy Spirit and uh, the Holy Spirit is like dynamite. And uh, I think, uh, again, I always refer to Mama Roy because she quotes the scriptures uh, <laughs> uh, about being a child and 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 giving and being filled. That's it, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Trying to understand that's that the Holy Spirit is the power, the source of the power. So once we're filled with that, but you can't, uh, if you don't give a child instructions to the power that's within them, Michael was talking about this too, uh, then they misuse that power because they're ignoring the authority. So again, humble yourself under the mighty hand of the most high, then you will be exhausted so again uh and what he was in his testimony it's the same thing he was learning to do that so he stopped judging his father for not being able to teach him how to be a father to honor him but he began to honor that voice within him because he's a man and the things that he's gone through has taught him how to be a man and if you can't if you don't use what we've got if i can't if i don't make an excuse about how I misuse uh, or make missteps because I didn't understand uh, my parents or the people around me or the, the creator and the environment, all of those things. If I can't say, well, you know, I didn't know. And use that as an excuse for not doing the correct thing. You still end up in, in the quote unquote, in the wrong place. We want to end up in the righteous place. So anyway, again, uh, learning what we have to do, 
and who we are to do. And so again, it comes down to we're talking about on a personal level, on the human level. Okay, again, the most high gave humans the authority. And this is still the same thing. But the enemy is the accuser of the brethren. And the other th the other thought that came to my to my mind as we were as I was listening was when the most high spoke at the beginning, he was speaking to his creation. So everything he was saying, do this. But he gave the human beings the authority in the earth's realm over these things. But then we have the accuser who is jealous, you know, my main thing. Thus he was deceived that he was the first. He wasn't. He was there when the most I was like, look, this, this, I'm creating this. I created you. I'm creating the rest of this. You, you need to fall in line. But because again, he was there, quote unquote, at the beginning and was manifested before we, the order of the, that the most high gives us, the host of heavens came before the manifestation of the earth realm and before the manifestation of the humans. So that's the order. Okay, and then we got to think about the race. The race was what? Replenish the earth because the enemy had already messed it up. But the Most High spoke it back into, uncovered it really. Same in comparison with uh, uh, Isaiah and uh, and what Mama Roy was talking about. Uh, the breath the bones, uh, the dead bones uh, coming alive in the awakening, shaking, the moving around, but without the authority of the spirit, not knowing it has that breath. But now we realize we have that breath, and so we are able to be alive. It's the breath that makes us alive. But when the enemy tells you you don't have no breath, he knocked the breath out of you. That's what happened in the earth. That's what he did to the mother earth. He knocked the breath out. Uh, traumatized the head. The earth is the head. It's the beginning of all life. By the word of the most high acting upon it. And so now we're realizing that. Uh, and the enemy is realizing it too. But he, he's... he's He's trying to blame us for what he did. And he said, and enacting all these all these laws. But he realized again, the most I said, no, you can't do that because you already broke the law. Because you tried to become human. You're not human. You have authority in the earth realm. You're a spirit being. And you knew that. But you ignored that that primary law. And this is what happened. And now you trying to blame my creators, my creation for doing this because they supposedly listen to you. But you deceive them. And so no longer we're deceived. We're learning how to honor from the spirit. Our spirit is coming alive so that our flesh operates accordingly. Okay, it's the word within us that causes us to move and have our being. So, I mean, this is this is good, but again, we're building on the first commandment, second commandment, the third commandment, fourth commandment, fifth commandment, and and so on. But this is the thing when I was looking this up, the I typed in what is the fifth commandment? What came up? Thou shalt not kill. And and the the main reference was it said the Catholic Bible. So, I mean, like I said, it was so many things, and I, I can't remember them all, it was just, it was a lot, and I have some good notes. But anyway, I mean, you just see again how, again, what the Most High saying, he spoke and said, he was telling me this, like, I, I was speaking to my whole creation, not just to human beings. And again, it's like the Bible is the book of what the enemy did. And the Most High speaking to, speaking to him and the people who, uh, the beings that followed him and they already know that they can't, there's no forgiveness for them. 
because it, it was for his cre creation. It was for him. The, what's the enemy trying to do? He's not only trying to kill the creator, he's trying to kill the creator because the creator is exemplified in us. So how are you gonna how are you gonna forgive him? I mean, yeah, he already told us where his end is, the lake of fire, forever and forever. And he's trying to take some of us with him. Beside what the scripture said, hell is made for the devil and his angels, not for the other two thirds that are doing the will of the most high and helping us to come out of this deep deception so that we can maintain our authority in the earth realm for our children, children, children's children. So that the most high, like you said, he's gonna reign forever. And how's he gonna reign? He has to reign through us. His, his word has went out, has not ceased. And so we have to do that by learning to honor, continue to learn to honor. And, you know, I mean, the enemy makes it extremely challenging because the Most High gave us food to eat. An enemy is food, the air to breathe, the earth to walk on. I mean, and our spirit to, to manipulate and travel the earth. And those are challenges, but we we've, we've overcome. We are overcomers. Yeah. Uh, some of the scriptures to back that up. Uh, uh, Ephesians two, we were talking about on the uh, human level. Honor your father and mother. It's the first commandment with a promise. Again, we talk about honor. So if we honor the earth, then we will remain. In the earth realm, uh, as spirit beings with authority, uh, Peter six one, children obey your parents. It's a nini nini, for this is right. And then all of these things are actions. These are not just thoughts, or well, they're not just remembrance. Let's remember, and and you break that down. Re Remember, remember has to do with what the Bible says, the body is made up of members. The head, within the head, you have the eyes, you know, all those things we know. So, yeah, this is, I mean, Most High has not taken me off, <laughs> off of this thing. Every part has a part and a part in particular. And as small as particulars are, uh, once they come together, they make this gigantic world. As the Most High says, his word will go forth uh, as the sand, as the water covers the seas. And, and also when he was talking to Abraham, he said, uh, your sons uh, and daughters will be like the sand of the sea. And we can't, I mean, you can't count that. I mean, they, they've been trying. They, <laughs> they do all kinds of, uh, numerical calculations and geometry and stuff, but you know, anyway, praise the most high. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Emma. Thank you so much. Michael, go ahead. I see your hand up. I just wanted to read some proverbs, but also I wanted to uh, say something about the voice. Uh, I'm a Shelly was saying something about you know, how when men say certain things, people listen. For the, like the last 10 years, I've been hearing that, but I'm kind of uh, kind of like to lay in the cut. I, I kind of like to be quiet a little bit, but I've been being told by a lot of people that ain't just my family, people I've met along the way that's really been helping, uh, helping me because I, I kind of be quiet, not because I'm scary or anything, it's just Honestly, people just talk too much. And I'm not, I'm not being funny, but people just talk just to hear themselves talking. Uh, no one's, and I don't mean no one, there's lots of people doing that, but for the majority, I didn't want to be someone who's just talking just to be heard. I'm gonna talk about something that I would like to, you know, put forth an action. 
I don't want to talk about problems. They're there. Are we going to talk about a solution? I don't want to just talk about solutions. I would rather perform the solution. So when that's just kind of how it was. And then I also felt that a lot of people couldn't relate to me. But that I've I've I see that that isn't which that that's not the case. I get asked a lot to say things with the children. Children that ain't even mine. I, a lot of people start pointing out when I come in the room how children react to me being quiet and and want to hear what I got to say. Uh, this this young lady tells me, you know, she watches how I'm six two, you know, but I. I get down on my knees to talk to the children. Like I'm, I'm super tall, them little bitty kids, I'm gonna come down there. I didn't see what she meant. You know, they, you, you take the time to get down there and talk to them. Yeah, Mr. Six Feet, but you get down there and talk to them. They they see that totally different. Yeah, something else that I, it just went over my head. Just uh, several people point out that it should go over your head because you're not doing it for somebody to pat you on your back. That's that's you, you know. And and they they talk about the tone of my voice. Like, I grew up in a house full of women. The last thing I want to do is, is scream. Dear Lord, I'm sorry, y'all, but hey, hey, whoo! The last thing I want to do is hear somebody organ or screaming. So I don't want to do it. Not to be funny, but man, just, that's all they can do is scream. And you you wonder why people don't react to me because. It's, it's your scream. But when you talk to me, you don't hear me. I don't want to repeat myself. I don't have to scream to you. If I'm not screaming and I'm talking to you direct, I just think you will probably get it. That's, again, another thing that I think, which means absolutely nothing. But to see the results of what someone is telling me, you know, when they're they're on the outside and they're watching, man, hey, people listen to you, man. Hey, uh, can you come over? and do what you did the other day. I didn't do anything. The kids want you to come through. They like they like when you explain into something about, you know, whatever they were into. Um, it is it's 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 something because I listen when certain certain men talk. I don't run across too many men in my life. And they ain't loud. They don't gotta be loud. But that rumble it's, it's something about that authoritative something, you know, and, and it, 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 it'll grab my attention and I don't care who it is. But it, uh, it, it did resonate and I try to pay attention now, you know, now that I'm back in the Midwest around my family, I, I try to pay attention and it's something I'm going I'm to watch. But, you know, it's kind of hard to see, you know, because you know, you don't really be looking for it. I want you to do something. I'm going to ask you, you know, and that's it. But it does, that that assertiveness, that 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 whatever that is that the Most High has given us, I think that power isn't, isn't nothing to mess with. And when we stay in him, the wielding of it is something, it's something fierce. It can't be, it can't be matched. Uh, where I was going to be here is this. Proverbs 28, and uh, I had to resort to these a lot coming up. I was a shorty. I mean, I, I hinged on some of these because I don't really have nobody to talk to because I ain't believe, you know, my old man, I wouldn't talk to him about it because, you know, I can't think that you you know this book, right? So I had to know it for myself. So uh, Proverbs 28, 7, who so keepeth the law is a wise son. But he that is a <clears throat> passion, I mean, excuse me, he that is a patient and a righteous man, shame is his father. He, he that by usury and unjust gain increases his substance. He shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. That one right there. I used to always, always try to try to remember when I was inside because I that the thing with law was the law that my mom would put the law doing what's right wrong. I just kind of made that that word law mean everything under 
the most high. And being in such a deep, dark place, that was something great to hold on to because it has made it has made such a impact that I can see it in a lot of things. I see the law of nature. I see the law of right and wrong. I see the law of of a new job. I see it in, in some going into someone's house, um, a new relationship, friendship, whatever. It's, it's what you have to do. You know, you have to you have to come out of that. Me, I always thought I had a problem with laws because I always thought anything made by a man that's a law, I'm not going with. Absolutely ignorant, but you have to you have to go through some things before you find, uh, you know, the uh, find the right way. And so I'm glad I do have the understanding now. But I, I'm glad that those basic uh, scripts that I hung on to, you know, I can see now as, as an old man that those are things that I uh, I anchored into in the new deep, 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 dark times in your life. That's what you have. And I don't whisper to myself. So I know that the voice that we were, we were discussing, we talked about, that is him. You know, so when I, when I tell it to my youngsters now, you know, they may they may have the little squint eye and they not they might not have the uh, understanding of it, but I think that they will because I remember going to the bathroom. My mom had fifteen different cardboard you know cardboard paper written all type of scripts on but going down the hallway you know go, before we go out the house just everywhere, and then you find is you know you be digging through the Bible. It's, Write these words on the walls, write them in the heart. You know? When I didn't have them, I had them. You know, when they told me I wasn't never coming, you get a life sentence, and here you go, got this place for you. Well, when I was in that hole, I can remember those, those different, those things. Oh, so that's what it means written on your heart. So those type of revelations come through, you know. So I, I, I really, 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 especially today, this Proverbs, man, 28, 7 to 9, but when it came to my prayer being abomination, that's the one thing I want because that's all I've ever had. You know, you you don't really have one that relates to you. Who are you talking to? you got to be talking to them. And it has to be a prayer. I mean, everything was a prayer. I, been talking myself since birth, you know, that's all you see is people walk around talking to each other. You know, they call it praying. So okay, I'm gonna do the same thing. I didn't want mine to be an abomination, you know. And even though I didn't have the right understanding then, but what I thought uh, as far as you know the law and you know shaming your father, all these words had a different meaning to me. But I'm glad it wasn't a negative. Even though it may not have been right, it was right for me then. It was right for my understanding, for my young, my young understanding, my, my young man mind. And I thank him for you know not putting me to the side, and casting me out. And I, it seems as if you know I'm something to him, you know, that he got a use for me, you know. And uh, other people are listening, even though I don't even be, you know, trying to say anything. So I just I know it ain't me, and I tell him that ain't me. I say a lot of stuff. I know it ain't me. I'm not that smart. But I mean, when I say that, I just, I just mean, you know, for real. You know, I, I ain't come up with that. I basically half the time I don't even want to hear what you're talking about. It's so ignorant. But I, I, I humble myself and listen to people because there's some things I ain't know. And if somebody listened to me, and for, for, for I don't know, for the most part, especially the last ten years, man. I don't be knowing where half the stuff my responses come from, and I tell them, and people come back. And when I tell them that he gave it to me, you know, that's that's all I have for you. I can tell you where I go and, and where I read, but when I respond, I just come from a certain place, and I ask him, you know, give me give me what to say, you know, give me what to say because I don't, I don't know. So I really, I really, really. Uh, 
really try to hang on this the proverb proverbs proverbs is, is my go to a lot and i really 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 have probably dissected some of this you know with years and, and probably if probably kind of screwed up the meanness, but I would take the invention pieces and keep them because they help. And so like now, now we're talking, these words, they don't have the same meaning. It, it, it's, it's like it's, right, it, it's somewhere else. I, like I, I can read it and before I'm done, I have a totally different understanding. And I, I know it ain't, I know it ain't me. So I, I always thank you. And I, I love, you know, I love this group because it makes, it makes talking seem worth it if that makes sense it it, it makes it makes it seem like it's it's worth something you know i don't i don't feel like i'm just i could be doing something I, you know you should have seen how i was driving to get here so so that we could sit and, and do this you know and i know where i i know where it comes from i i, I, I look forward to the sabbath i want to give him all the glory all the time but then it has become something that that's I, I feel like I am doing right. Where you know a couple of years ago I didn't know. Now it doesn't. You can say whatever. It's nothing happening on Saturday because I, it ain't for you. I'm not doing this for you. I'm I call myself obedient. All I want to do is be just right, just righteous. That's it. Just right, not by man's standards. Not the most high standards. So that's how I'm going to start right there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Elder Mike, for that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, you, you bring it home today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. You know, I have a friend who used to say when I was back in college, almost 20 something years ago, he used to say, um, Speak if you can improve the silence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you reminded me of that. You know, it's really, really helpful. Um, thank you so much for that. Um, 